So I want to talk about the superpower of exploring in art and um, then after getting into the topic maybe give you a couple tips um, or applications that you can apply to your own art practice. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, should be a good one. Before we get into the topic, um, I just ask that you hit like and hit subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when I'm about to go live. Last night I was working on uh, Not Death But Love, The Strange Supernatural Story of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, which is a historical fiction graphic novel that's about the famous poets, the Brownings, Elizabeth Barrett Browning and her husband, uh, Robert Browning, and her interest in uh, basically seances and uh, exploration. It, it involves seance, Victorian seances, it involves magicians, it's got a nice love story of, about a forbidden romance. It has a, a brother being lost at sea. It's a very like romantic and epic kind of story and it's very exciting. And it got me thinking about this topic because I'm on a specific page where I have to draw a giant auditorium in Italy, an actual location uh, that existed in history um, and basically put a magician named Bosco into that scenario and then kind of ideate like a magic routine, uh, you know, do the setting in Victorian, uh, Victorian Italy, not England. And, uh, and it got me thinking about the fact that we have this superpower as artists. Now, what do I mean by like a superpower as artists? I think I would basically be saying that as a superpower, we have the ability to take an idea, like I want to draw like a completely amazing scene of a, um, of a magic show in a giant auditorium that I only have like one picture of. And then we can take that scene and we get to actually populate it with our own imaginations and explorations of what we see in our heads. And we get to take a vision that's unseen and help realize it. Which is pretty cool. That's like a superpower. I mean, that is like one of the coolest things that I think we have uh, as artists in our toolkit is the superpower to be able to kind of imagine to put our imagination to practice, to rough and thumbnail, and then ideate that idea, and then make something that didn't exist a reality. And so that got me thinking about exploration. Now, a lot of people may not realize, but it's like to explore is actually like a really fundamental thing to art. I feel like if you find yourself in a position where you're working on a long form project, and you aren't kind of exploring, you're gonna catch yourself getting really tired of your projects. And so in that case, I would almost think that maybe the issue, maybe the reason you're not getting into the project as much is the fact that maybe you're not exploring enough or maybe there aren't enough elements in your story uh, to help you to explore more. So when you're finding yourself kind of unex uninspired uh, or finding yourself at like a dead end with an art project, I would just encourage you to find something really cool about it. Like in this case on this page where it was like this crazy, interesting theater that I'm having to rough out and uh, start taking joy in the exploration and the math of it. Like the idea of like almost setting a stage, like starting to think of what you're doing as like setting up a little stage play. Um, and that should actually be a pretty interesting thing to do. Um, and I think that's one of the fun things about exploring in art. Now, another thing about this project that got me thinking about exploring was the fact that I have chosen to do an entirely different medium uh, for this project. And so, with two stories, my first graphic novel, I did everything hand lettered, hand inked in black and white with a lot of cross hatching, alternating between two different styles. And even within that, I was doing a bit of exploration because I was exploring uh, two totally different styles to communicate two different parts of the story 
childhood sequences were done in this more kind of like childlike uh, cartoony style and then sequences that talked about my adulthood since it was an autobiographical story uh, were done in like this highly rendered really graphic narrative style and so those two style explorations really kept me sane throughout the process of making um, a graphic novel like two stories Jacob's apartment had similar explorations, but a lot of it was with playing with dream sequences. So while I was doing a slice of life narrative, I also had these little breaks of being able to do these very fun, uh, very uh, challenging, more sequentially interesting uh, dream sequences that helped me navigate, and I think helped the viewer and reader navigate the heavy topics that were in the story that mostly took place in reality. So allowing yourself to explore fantasy is actually another form of exploration that I would really encourage you guys to do in your art. But the main exploration that I'm doing in this that I feel is pretty different from a lot of uh, stories that I've done so far is I've chosen to do this in a completely different style. So Jacob's apartment was also a different style where it was done in hand, traditionally inked but digitally colored with flat colors. And in this case, I wanted to change things up a lot because I thought it would be cool to explore the theme of Victorian England. And so in that case, I chose a style that felt more Victorian for me. So part of it was rather than having hard edged, solid black lines, I thought it would be more cool to have it actually look more drawn. But I also didn't want to lose the darkness and the richness of ink. So what I ended up opting to do was kind of mimicking a style that you would usually do with like a black Prismacolor on Coquille board, where it's a lot of heavy black line and a lot of um, black uh, used in different tones, but used like you would use in a, on a, with a really thick black pencil and then kind of toning it with just flat colors in general that didn't have any rendering on them. So it kind of creates a unique style and that style exploration has been a really fun part of this book as well as far as I've gone on it. And this gets me to the last uh, part of this which is exploring tools. So um, often I, you know, I, I usually do most of my artwork for my personal work uh, using, you know, traditional inks, uh, using, you know, inking with uh, a brush on bristle board and uh, then digitally coloring. And in this case, I'm doing the entire book all digital. Um, and I usually rule out my lines with like very meticulous uh, measurements using multiple rulers and circle templates and stuff like that so that anything that's like circular has like a really nice perfect circle to it anything that's uh that's you know a rigid line is completely straight because i'm using rulers um, and so the only variation you're going to get on those books is just the fact that they're traditionally done so even those straight lines have a little bit of uh, error to them which is what i love about traditional medium but in this case on this book to give it more of a fluid artistic feeling, I opted to actually freehand everything. So basically even the borders and the panel borders and the word balloons and everything, all of it is being loosely done. So I'm not using rulers or circle templates intentionally on it so that it has a different look and feel. And that also frees me up uh, because now I don't have to rule out everything. It's a little more organic and a little more natural of a process and uh, to be honest I was a little scared to try this out and this is going to get into a kind of big uh, part of the topic of exploration of course it's a huge topic and we can get into much more details later on but if you're you know still with me uh, hang in there because I'll try to wrap this up in a nice with a nice bow with a few ways that we can apply this idea of exploration to our own artwork at the end so let me just finish this last point and then we'll get into that end part that's hopefully applicable to you. All right, so I was gonna talk about um, going into this book though, changing up my style, changing up the medium, uh, changing up the method of attack, 
uh, for, for how I was going to execute this graphic novel um, was a little intimidating. And I have to admit, I felt a mild bit of fear. Wait, fear? You really felt fear? Yes, fear. Um, and basically changing things up as an artist and exploring is like exploration in real life. Where let's say you decided to explore a tunnel that's out in the middle of nowhere. You start going in there, and as you're going further and further into the tunnel, you can feel a little creeped out. You can feel a little scared. And the only way you can kind of get through that tunnel is to kind of be a little fearless. Yes, be smart. Yes, plan out your path. You know, bring as many tools and as much equipment as you can on your journey into this tunnel of exploration. But at the end of the day, it's trying something new. And a big part of trying something new is to take that fear and put it in, you know, crumple it up, hold it in your hand, and then let it go and continue to explore. So anyhow, um, not a lot of thoughts today. Uh, just a little bit of, uh, of logins. Uh, where I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the things I'm thinking about, about exploration. And I'm honestly thankful about, about exploration that I thought I should bring up because I was noticing that last night, even though I'm on page 79 of my graphic novel, and yes, it gets very tiring being that many pages into a book where you're drawing the same characters, the same panels, and it's a lot of sameness. I was drawing this theater and I, I felt really thankful for the opportunity to be an artist and be able to explore and set up a stage of my own making with my own characters and travel through time back to Victorian England and, and sit in a theater and watch a magician who's long gone. And this was all within my capacity and my training to be able to actually make that happen. And how exciting is that? The fact that we have that power at our fingertips. So wrapping it up, how is this applicable to you? I'm gonna give you like a few things that you can apply in your art that might help, uh, you know, you explore more uh, that we kind of reviewed in the video, but we'll recap and talk about applicable things you can do. Number one would be change it up. Don't get stuck in a style. That's number one. You don't always have to execute everything in, this, in the same style. Number two, try new things. So when it comes to uh, this page, one of the things that was invigorating about it was taking on a really ambitious panel where I had to draw this theater from Victorian Italy. It was a very intimidating thing. And that's gonna go right into number three. Number three is be fearless. Be fearless in your approach and uh, don't let fear or intimidation stop you from trying something ambitious. All right, let's get into number four. Number four would basically be maybe change up your tools. Uh, just because you're an artist that likes using specific kinds of tools, bringing a new tool into the process or abandoning old tools, kind of like I was talking about with rulers, and then not using rulers for a future book. And maybe my next book I'll use tons of rulers. Who knows? But the point is, sometimes maybe just throwing out that ruler for a project that's coming up or for the next painting or for the next art piece that you're working on could actually help you reinvigorate your imagination and re-engage and re-challenge you as an artist, which is a really good thing. So consider that. And I can't even remember what number I'm on, but I'd say the last part is have fun. And remember, this is an exploration. And much like an explorer of old who's shown up in a, in a land you've never been, a lot of the journey is just kind of stepping off of the boat and, and walking through this new area that you've, that you've arrived at and figuring out the lay of the land. And along with the old explorers, just like that, you're going to make mistakes along the way, you're gonna learn from those mistakes, and you're gonna end up having your imagination renewed, refreshed, and fed, and that will translate to better art, 
and I think a better time executing art. So anyhow, it was a rare moment of positivity that I've experienced uh, in, in working on this graphic novel. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I know sometimes on my vlogs, because I talk pretty candidly about comics and art, I can sound like I kind of hate the process. I even did a video called Comic Books Suck, which was all about this process is really hard and it kind of sucks. And uh, some of it is not as enjoyable as people say it is. But I did want to play up the fact that there are parts like this, like last night, when I drew a, a rough for a panel and I just felt really happy and thankful to be able to do that exploration and to be building the tools and the, and the equipment to be able to, um, and the skill set to be able to explore different worlds, different time periods, and make what otherwise didn't exist come into existence like a magician. So, another thing I'd ask you to explore is explore that like button, explore that share, uh, you know, explore some, hitting subscribe and the bell. Anything you can do like that would get, uh, would really help out my channel and help us get more viewers and more, uh, more people with their eyes on us helps me be able to do more videos like this where I can share stuff that hopefully helps you. So I'm curious about the last time you made a major exploration in your artwork and what was it? Let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear about your explorations and whether you have any other tips that we could put into practice that would help us explore as artists. All right guys, that'll do it. I'm gonna head home and uh, that's it for my vloggings. I'll see you on the next one.